Hey, what's up guys? It's Brian and Andrew. We're with uh, Full Yeet Adventure YouTube channel. Today we're going to install some XDR gated shifters. Hill, hill in our killer Polaris. shifters. Yeah, yep. the hill killers. Yep. Uh, we're going to put one in our My uh, 2020 Turbo S. B and M XDR shifter. <laughs> So today we're going to start, we're going to put our hill killer shifter in my 2020 Turbo S. Um, should be rather easy, this is a fairly new machine. Um, it's a little dirty still from Moab, but uh, really excited to put that in here. Been wanting to put this shifter in for a bit and really can't say enough about it. Uh, it'll be really cool to have finally have something quality in here. Uh, been really wanting to do this hill killer since uh, Dustin had one in his four seater uh, and showed it to us. So. Thank you to XDR for sending us some shifters and letting us do this video and ready to put it in and get out on the trails and test them out. Big difference with these when you pull these shifters down into the gear in, into gear, they lock really well. Andrew's going to kind of show here later on when we do the XP1000, um, kind of what happens when the machines get older. When you go to pull these back into gear, this one's still pretty solid because this machine's pretty new. But as you try to go and put these stock shifters into gear, even when you adjust them, they get a little loose up here, and they kind of have to hunt for gear where you got to play with it. But like I said, that's not the case with this machine. It's rather new and every now and then it'll do it but i mean the stock shifter it's not bad but you can i mean once they kind of get some play in them you can just bump it on accident on a bumpy trail and knock it out of gear um and you really destroy a transmission doing that so really like having this gated shifter in there kind of helps eliminate that because this shifter is a lot stiffer uh, so we'll go ahead and get ready to start putting this in uh first thing take your seats out and then we'll get this center console out.
Tinker's Tools. Make sure we get full force on the clip. Just pile it right across. Send Looks it. Like I saved it. Send it. We got a pen down here. Get just a little bit of help with. Sweet. This is either one. So we got a washer. Cable. And that comes off, and then we got bushings in here that we don't want to lose. Yep, I got one right here. There's the full old shifter assembly, bushings and all. They say in the directions that you really want to look at these and make sure they're not worn, cracked, broken, missing, anything like that. Um, other than that, I think we can take this piece over to the bench and change out the actual shift uh, pin. We'll put it on our new assembly. And then the new assembly will be bolted in uh, with minor adjustments. That's pretty much it. Temporary screw. We're on the driver's side of the machine. Drops right down in this pocket. That's our temporary screw just holding this piece from falling all the way down in uh, the bottom of the frame here. So now you can see the backer bar is actually what we're going to use to thread through on the passenger side of the machine through this hole here. So this plate indexes on the original shifter shaft. This hole that we now have here is what's going to thread in and hold this from rotating. So next step, apply Loctite to the screw, insert the screw through the flat washer. There's only one of these washers for this screw. Okay. Uh, stick it through the gate mount and backer bar to secure parts together and tighten the screw loosely. Okay. Here's a ratchet with a 13. Probably back, standard size, yep. We're back to the plate that we slid in on the driver's side with our false screw. Keep the plate from moving down. Yep. A couple of wiggles. That threads right in. This looks like a 13 millimeter. Snug this down. And then we can take our false screw back out. Does that sound real? Yeah, I'd take that back cool. out now. Put that back down there for you to lose later. So we're up to like what? Step 11 we're maybe? Up to step 13. Okay. Step 13 is to put the original bushings out of your factory shifter into the new shifter. And then uh, gonna slide yeah. that on our Yeah, you gotta put that pin. on the pivot sleeve. Okay, now this is where our shimming comes into play. Okay. So it's going to say step 14. This is where it gets interesting now. Place stick onto pivot shaft. As met, install as many shims as necessary onto the other side of pivot sleeve until shifter operation is smooth. No drag against gate plate. So the shimming comes into play here. Uh, looks like this backing plate, they do not want to come in contact with the shifter. So shiny part should not contact the dark part. Um, so essentially what we're going to do is hold our gate in. Make sure it's nice and free, moves nice and easy. Yeah, it moves nice and smooth, there's no contact. I'm just holding light pressure against this to simulate that, it, that it's clipped in. It's not actually got all the retainers in it. But, looks like our machining is close enough on this one that it's, it's flawless just out of the box. No shims needed. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. Was like, um, they, they do give you plenty of shims for anything that may or may not be worn. All right, guys, so we actually forgot to remove this pin out of the shifter while it was on the workbench. So we're going to remove the um, shift pin. So our factory shift cable indexes here. The new one doesn't come with one because we have one. It's not really a wear item. There's no real need to replace it unless you've got deep gouging or something really going on wrong here. So we're going to remove this pin, install it on the new shifter, and we'll be able to install the previously removed uh, C-clip here and little lock pin that goes here. Alright, so we'll get this pin removed, get rid of that. I'm going to drop this right in here. Here, I'll hold that one. You got that set side? That. Go ahead and set that. Get your wrench. I got it, yeah. Alright. Nice and snug. There we go. So we've got a couple of clips left and yep. you're pretty much there, huh? Yep, put that there. Let's put 
this one was on the lower pin, right? Washer on the lower pin. Washer on the lower pin. Push clip on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Try not to lose it. I'm installing it. It's more fun if you look for the parts you lost for 15 minutes. I'd rather not do that. And then fun C, C clip, clip on the top. Yeah, that's always the fun one. Yep, right there. Sounds like it snapped right yep. in. Everything snapped together. Alright. Uh, Alright, so now we can run through these functionalities, just make sure everything's working right. As we talked about before, this thing is dual selectable, so you have gated every feature, and then you have a quick bump selection also in the same shifter. Um, so currently we have gated all positions, so we are in high. We can bump to low, we can bump to neutral, we can bump to reverse, and then we can bump to park, and she's locked in park. You can also pull the lever again in park, and it drops the pin selection down to our lower non-gated section, and once you're in reverse, you can go straight to low, all the way to high, back to low, bump to reverse, and into park. So once you have let go of park, you can press one detent and you're locked in reverse. Then you can go to neutral, low, and high, all in the same shifter. So now that we kind of, we've tested this one, this one works pretty well. Like we said before, this machine's really new. So there's not much adjustment needed to it. Uh, might have to adjust our high just a little bit because it's not locking all the way in. Uh, so after this point, what we would do is go down to the transmission and make an adjustment on the transmission mm -hmm. to make sure that it locks in every gear, which we'll have to make a minor adjustment on this one for high since it's just a little off. Um, older machines, which we're about to do next, you'll see a lot bigger of a difference in it where the stock shifter will be loose like, will be a lot looser than this. It's kind of hard to tell with the other one, but it will not pull all the way down into a gear. So kind of like here where it's supposed to be in high and the, the lever's not locked in. As you can see, you know, you lock it into the spot, that lever kicks out just a little more than that. So You can hear it. Yeah, you can actually hear it. There's a mechanical it. noise. So, yeah. Um, so we'll have to adjust this one just a little bit. Uh, but other than that, we'll button this one up and it's ready to go. guys so we're gonna start on the second install this is an older machine so we'll really get to see how the product that they offer really benefits on something that's a little bit older um, there's a lot of wear in the shifter this is in park so we got a lot of play it's kind of all over the place and we're gonna really try and highlight why you should buy this product um, in our opinion as riders um, first off uh, we can go directly from park currently to any gear that we want with no effort. So if you're on a hill and we're in park and you don't have your foot on the brake, you can actually go right into any gear and just take off rolling. Another uh, huge concern that we always have is we're in neutral now and we want to be in reverse really have to so the machine shows we're in reverse currently uh, we're not in reverse we're not moving so you actually have to mechanically feel where so it's that's the slot for reverse currently 
Well, it actually went in that time, so we're in park, kinda, maybe. We'll go to reverse. There's the mechanical reverse. Right, right there, maybe. Nope, not actually reverse. Oh, there it goes. Now we're in reverse. So, when you're on a hill, trying to back up or maneuver via the stock shifter is very, um, uh, kind of a guess game. Uh, especially if you're trying to be in low uh, and you're on a hill, you have to go from high, which is all the way down, up just a slight amount to go into low. So, it shows we're in low on the dash, but just barely wiggling the shifter will actually change the gear indication with no actual physical input. I mean, we're in low there. Just barely bump this with our finger and now it's in neutral. So being able to have a positive, you know, I'm in low or I'm in a gear period is, is very critical uh, in most situations. So. We're gonna go put the machine in a predicament that's real life. I mean, it's in my yard, but um, it is a situation that we have a hard time with getting these machines in and out of gear, trying to maneuver around an obstacle. We're on, uh, I don't know, probably a 40 degree angle. Brian's standing upright. We're in the ditch somewhere. Say we wanna go in reverse. Um, we gotta make a guess. So we're in park. We gotta really pull it out of park and then we'll venture back up to reverse. And with a bunch of slop, we will uh, guess we're in reverse and try and back up. Okay, so we're in reverse, it works. Uh, let's say we want to advance now. We gotta go to low gear, which is here somewhere. It says we're in low, let's see. No, we're not in low. Anybody catch the audible there? So we're in low there. We're not actually in a gear because it doesn't actually know where we're at. And this is a brand new shift cable in this machine. Um, it's been adjusted three or four times. Anybody that rides a Polaris has heard that noise of uh, not knowing if you're in gear or not. So. With this hill killer, we're gonna do just a quick install, just a time lapse for you guys, and then we'll come back to the exact same spot and show you how positive of engagement we have on a gear shift. So basically on the 14, very similar to doing the 2020 Turbo S. Um, the only difference in taking the center console up is the front pin. It's just a pin, not a bolt like the Turbo S's have. Uh, the only difference that we've noticed so far is for whatever reason on this machine, it does not have the hole to be able to put the holder to hold the shifter in place. So we're going to have to drill a hole on this one and put our bolt that way, our bolt nut that way. Get it going. guys so we just did a time lapse on uh, the install on the older machine this one is a 14 so uh, even though this is a new cable it was adjusted to work on the old shifter so on this occasion it's a little bit too hard to get all the way into park so we'll actually get to show you how to make an adjustment um, I like to put a little bit of uh, penetrant on here just to kind of knock some of the mud off uh, this specific one is a 19 millimeter on this adjustment nut. 
Luckily, I've already had it loose, so it's not too bad. And we're going to slide it out like that. Then we can make our adjustment on this nut, in our case, to let us have park a little bit sooner. I'll slide it back in the holder here. Alright, so we got a simple adjustment made. Looks like Ryan's not having any problems getting through any of the gears now. It was just a little bit tight and park trying to get into the gated or non-gated section. So go all the way forward. Goes right into park. Right in the board. There's your neutral. Low. Neutral. Oops. Reverse. Park. Too far, too far. Sweet. There's the free shift. Free shift. Back to park. Which is awesome. Hey, long time no see. So we got our second shifter in. You saw us make a simple adjustment. Um, we can kind of row through the functionalities here that we have now. So perfect positive engagement in reverse. We have a gear. We got an indicator that shows reverse. You can't take it out of reverse and start moving anywhere. We've got positive engagement for low. Bam. Goes right into low. Goes right into high and it's locked. It's pretty awesome. So you also have on these shifters, you have a non-gated selector also. So if you're all the way up in park and you pull the gated lever all the way down and go back one will be reverse. You can go right into neutral, right into low, gear selector pull, you go into high. And you can go from high all the way to reverse without pull in any selector. Uh, we'll call this the gate lever. So um, the only lever you have to pull is to go from low to high or from reverse to park in that mode. So if you give the gate selector a short pull, I don't know if you can catch, but if you hold just a little bit of rearward pressure and a short gate pull, that will make the shifter locked in every gear position. All the way into high. So you can hold the gate lever. If you're in high, you can hold the gate lever in and go all the way to park. Or you can select each individual gear with the gate lever. Pretty heavy incline right here. It's kind of surprising. So we're in high. You can mechanically go to low, it's in. We can go to neutral, she's in. Um, reverse is usually the hard part in these. No issue there. So then we had an issue with low. So we're in gated, so there's neutral and there's low. Functionality is so smooth on that. Even if you had gloves on, anything really, I think it would just work. So we're in gated mode. So if we know we were going to hit a hill, you go all the way to park, pull all the way down, and now we're in free shift, right? So we'll simulate a climb here and pop this thing into reverse, see how it performs. So we're coming up the hill, the front end's tipped way up. Bam, right into reverse. It's pretty slick. Let's do it again. It's pretty cool. I like that. It'll definitely save your butt in a, in a bad spot. So we can also go from high all the way to reverse. So we're in free shift high. We'll go from high all the way to reverse. It's pretty extreme. She goes right in. Pretty slow. So, during the outro there, you may have noticed that we have
have a disconnect. Um, it's actually made for that. I needed the pin for my lawnmower to keep the front wheel on, walk behind. 